What, what do you want from me? They will never be safe, no matter how deep you hide them in holes, inside holes, inside holes. What do you want from me? You can't kill it. I can't make it go away. It will do as it pleases. You are exhausted. I can't, I can't give, give up. You must kill it. And, and kill it. And to kill it. And kill it. It will keep finding them. It will hunt them down. One by one. Until there are none. I, I... Need no. You will lose her too. What do you want from me? What is it now? I thought that Fulway took care of them, but they are getting closer. Where's Fulway? And where is Columbo? Okay, <laughs> they're gone but I have the impression that Columbo didn't want to confront them. Weird. And they're back. Well, the problem is at Fulway's house. He'll deal with them when he gets back from wherever he is. In the meantime, there's lots of work to do at Luhanga's house. Under all this dirt, there's a huge treasure of precious shells. These shells that I uncover are just the tip of an endless shell bed. All we need is to get rid of all the dirt. Our children will conquer the whole shell bed, and we will no longer need protection from anyone. You don't believe me, Buana? If you stay here long enough, and I hope you don't, you'll see. My people have already built countless cities here at the Great Lake. All those big cities started with a family just like mine. And if you live long enough, Buana, you'll see all those other uncivilized people disappear. Speaking about that, you really should watch your back. Yes, you are big, but there are even bigger people around. See that family up ahead? Soon, our family will be as big as theirs. Our children will dig up shells around our houses, and then there will be no more dirt and dust, just a beautiful plain of shells. Kala and Kalambo have no idea. There will be no place here for them when we finish cleaning this place up. Me, I always start on 206. Up to now, I'm still working here. So, maybe we can join the local fishermen to go to the lake. Yeah. 
because uh, some people is not working. They stay, they not find the jobs. So if there is more companies here, some people they find the jobs and start working. Uh, and they stop suffering. So it's good. Because uh, the Mzunguzi, we have the money. And we, we find the, some jobs to, to the white person. That's why we find the white person. The blacks, they don't have money and they don't have working too. Yeah, some people, they start starting suffering. Yeah. Where did Fulway go? No, little Russia, I haven't forgotten about you. But Luhanga needs a little bit more help now. Horrible pest. Good to see you back, Fulway, but not so close. You two should be getting along much better by now. Where were you? You had visitors while you were away, and they made themselves at home. There they are again. <laughs> you see, Fulway, you shouldn't be away from your house for so long. They thought your place was free, but I'm sure you can handle them. I'm tired of watching your little fight. It's too boring. Oh! Things are starting to heat up. Just showing him how big you are is not gonna do it, Fulway. Face him. You're enjoying this too, aren't you, Buana? Oh ho, oh. things aren't going very well for Fu Wei. Fu Wei, where are you going? Come back and face him. Colombo, you could have prevented this. I doubt Fu Wei will come back now. At least it's good to see that you're back on duty. Started at first, he started as a casual worker. Okay. Now, after after some years, that's when he, he signed to be a permanent worker in 2009. Yeah, yeah it's, yes, uh, it, there was a change because people were getting employed. Yeah, and uh, something like that. Yeah, there are people are getting employed. Yeah. Okay, fishing companies. Uh, these days, fish is not uh, very much uh, uh, caught in abundance. Uh, in later days, later years, there were more fish 
but now nowadays just scarcely caught you know, just a few just a few yeah. no even fishing companies are, are good also because they are employing people uh, they are not catching fish but uh, they are just buying fish from the local fishermen yeah. uh, well they are bringing forex to the to the government yeah and um, even also employment because for you to come here it, uh, it will mean they want somebody to work for you yeah so even employment I love you too, Russia. Luhanga, don't throw dirt in her yard. Can't we have a moment's peace here? I saw that. And you little pest, don't tease her too. I don't know what kind of people you are, but you better keep your distance. See how strong I am? Stay away, you dirty animals! Out! I said, out! Go! Before I shred your fins to pieces! You didn't need to come. I had it under control. They're gone. Huh, <laughs> go on, kill each other. It's getting hazy again. Colombo and Kala really look quite happy today. I am starting to believe that he does this on purpose. Please, leave her alone, Luhanga. Yes, he does this on purpose. This neighborhood has seen better days. Yeah, show them the way out, Kala. What? You're backing down? I thought better of you, Kala. Kala and Kalambo have really big mouths, but they don't have the guts to go with it. You should know by now that you shouldn't mess with me, Mboko. That a boy, back away. Go find a shack far away from here. When I started working at Peacework to and I found the the money and I buy a small house. Yeah. When I stopped there, when I joined Tundol Bay, again I found a big house and I can buy to 700,000. I'm still, I'm still staying in my big house. Yeah. They get, uh, I've got the four rooms inside and the sitting room and the bathroom. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Lofu we made with the the pose. Find the pose in, at the bush, the straight ones. Yeah, then we sit to, to the corners, 
then to close to the the places and we put the rafters on top then we put the glass on top yeah it's like this the, our house in the village is not round like this the corners like your that house your home five yeah and the and the outside the, the house we put the bricks and the cement inside the rooms yeah and blaster and we paint yeah, my like my house i paint white and the green yeah and also inside you put the, i put the blast i paint white because the year is it's more until you know until is the insects eating the glass so after three years we remove the glass and put the new one okay. every film every few years because uh, long long ago uh, the people they're making the they putting the when they make the house they put the sticks around the corners corner to corner put the sticks then they put the the absorb the soil just put on on the sticks inside and outside yeah then put the roof but now some people they making the bricks they start building so it's a different when I was young yeah now the perfect house need to make a to make a house with a roof sheet, the perfect one. So we buy the now, like now, we buy the plots nearby the school. Uh, so some people they buy the plots. We need to start building uh, the house of roof sheet. Roof sheet is uh, uh, like uh, the office. You see that uh, material. Yeah, it's not it's not a thatching house. Maybe if we put the the the, the boards inside, yeah, it's not what. This person doesn't want our houses. He wants us. Does he always have to do this? You again? Is that determination or just plain stupidity? Haven't you seen what I'm capable of? Leave now and never come back. Dirty beast. Where do you think you're going, Luhanga? Get back in your house, right now. And I think I'm going back to my house too. I have a house, my house in so in Mpulungu, but here I'm living in the company's house. Yeah. Uh, well, I just bought it. Yeah, when I was working in the JLP company, I bought it. Yeah. Uh, the, the house in Ndole, it has got two bedrooms, and a sitting room, and the pantry. Uh, it is built of uh, uh, bricks and paint bricks yeah. and uh, glass, thatched glass. Uh, the roof is uh, three years, four, uh, maybe five years. Five years you put another in a new roof. It gets rotten by the termites. Yeah. 
Um, actually, they are just the same. Yeah, they are just the same. They just change when maybe you were, you were living in a house uh, and painted bricks with the glass touched. Then you change, maybe you, you, you burn the, the bricks. After burning, then you build with cement and, and the roof, you put the iron sheets. That is the only change. Uh, I would want a big house uh, uh, with bent bricks and uh, put the iron sheet. Yeah. Why don't you let me in? I would never harm them. Leave Russia alone. The sand people, they are peaceful, but still not welcome. think that he really likes us, unfortunately. Colombo and Kala also visit other families like mine, but not so often. Maybe that's what you should do too, Buana. Shells and silt. This area of vast shell beds can be found between 10 and 20 meters deep and it's covered with a thin layer of silt. After the reef like area towards the east, there is a vast plain of sand covering the lake floor as the depth slowly increases. Fish are scarce here and they seem to hold no territories. As the lake floor approaches the 10 meters of depth, the sand starts to give way to silt, and shells now become a more common sight. This area of silt and scattered shells is the habitat of a few fish species that depend on these shells for their survival. One of the most remarkable species is Neolamprologus ocellatus. Other species, like these Xenotilapias, live in this habitat and wander through large areas, sifting the silt. The Ocelatus seem to benefit from their scavenging to find food. The Xenotilapias are among the most peaceful fish in the lake and are tolerated by most other species. On the other hand, although the Ocelatus is one of the smallest fish species of the lake, with males barely reaching 5 cm, its courage and spirit can't easily be matched. His aggression is very selective. A Limnochromis auritus is no cause for concern for the Ocelatus. One good reason to fight is the scarcity of resources. However, the same doesn't apply to Talmatochromis temporalis. They compete for food and space, but most important of all, for shells. In this transitional area between sand and dust, shells are a scarce resource and are very worth fighting for. Although their body language is different, they manage to communicate their intentions very well before entering a battle that can cause damage to both sides. Telmatochromis live normally as strong, bonded couples, but they don't remain for long periods in the same spot. They seem to be always on the lookout for new shells. On the other hand, the Ocelatus tends to live in small harems of one male and a few females that tend to stay in the same territory for as long as possible. 
as long as the encounters happen far away from its shells, he won't bother any other fish passing by. They normally take possession of a few shells that they bury, keeping only the opening at ground level. If there are any other shells around that they don't need, they bury them completely so that they don't get the attention of unwanted neighbors. The ocelatus are among the boldest animals of Lake Tanganyika, but the bite of a male Telmatochromis can cause considerable damage. At this moment, this male ocelatus is living by himself. For such a tiny fish, the territory of a male ocelatus can be quite big, ranging over 2 square meters. He can't be aware of everything that is going on on such a large area. This is a situation that has all the ingredients to end badly for the female Telmatochromis. She can't turn around and defend herself. When she tries to back out, he attacks her and she is forced to get deeper inside the shell. But the invasion of his shell isn't the only thing that he has to deal with. A male Neolamprologus or Matipinis passing by also requires his attention. If he had been away a little longer, the female Telmatochromis could have tried to escape. Getting out of a tight shell backwards is a difficult maneuver. He would have continued to attack her until she managed to get out, or more likely, until he killed her. But Lake Tanganyika's stories are seldom that straightforward. Turns to his shell, visibly shaken. The male Telmatochromis is probably searching for his partner. He wants to continue looking for her and leave the fight. But the Ocelatus is too wound up to just let him go. his partner. The afternoon current sweeps the bottom of the lake. A male ocelatus returns home to an empty shell.
Here comes the big brute. That's Bismarck. He lives nearby, but we don't see him much. And <laughs> Colombo makes sure of that. What a messy person! Well, at least he rips away some big chunks of algae from time to time. Colombo! Come back here! This time, they seem to be more interested in your detached eyes than in me, Buana. Not in Boko again! And I hadn't noticed that Fulway has returned. Come on, Fulway. Damn you, Mboko. One of those sand people. Are you lost? Where's the rest of your gang? Just a little tasty thing in the water. And a big clumsy thing in the water too. Another species that inhabits this silty area is the Neolamprologus tetracanthus. The ocelotus doesn't pay much attention to other species passing by, like the Limnochromis auritus, and even the Lepidiolamprologus cunnigtoni one of the most notorious menaces to small fish in this area. But the scavenging of the tetracanthus on the silt near one of its shells can't be ignored, and the fact that his opponent is many times his size doesn't stop him. Neolamprologus tetracanthus is not a particularly aggressive fish, but from time to time, the boisterous nature of the ocelatus can make him lose his patience. Having such a large territory provides the opportunity to hunt small animals hiding in the silt and tufts of algae. The stronger current in the afternoon brings zooplankton that he catches as it passes by to complement his diet. Neolamprologus ocellatus is considered a harem brooder, they can also be seen living as couples. The male tries to attract females to his territory that must include a few shells to house them. This female seems to have moved in recently and she is still working on her shell. The shell must be buried in the silt with the opening at ground level. The first part of the task is to remove silt from underneath the shell, so that the shell can sink. After the shell is at an appropriate level, it's time to start covering it again. If there's something that can get the attention of an ocellatus, is the dust clouds caused by digging activities. Once the female settles inside the male's territory, it's her that has to seduce the male. not pleased with the state of her shell. It still needs some work. His visits encourage her to work even harder to finish her job. The shell still needs to be slightly deeper and then covered. Ideally, the shell should be as discreet as possible 
so that it doesn't catch the attention of potential predators of the fry and even of the female herself. When she lures him to her shell, she enters and quivers her body to show him that she is ready to mate. He's got the message, but the shell isn't ready yet. She has already removed enough silt from underneath the shell. It's time to cover it. One day, I will get rid of this pest for good, but it seems to grow faster than I can get rid of it. Why is everyone so afraid of those stupid people? He won't dare come near again. He really is interested in me. It's not mutual. Dirty brute of an animal. I see that you have some difficulties learning, Mboko, but I don't mind teaching you a lesson again. Giving someone a beating really puts me in a good mood. You should try it sometime, Buana. Mmm, the water is filled with nice and tasty little critters. Can't you see them, Wana? Huh, your loss. One day, I'll get rid of this damn thing. It makes me mad. Get inside, Resha. Come up, ladies. The current is bringing little tasty critters again. One day... This is the only time I let them out. Well, they need to eat something. It's the male's job to keep intruders at bay. This applies to potential predators like this large Lepidiolamprologus cuningtoni. Closer relatives like this Neolamprologus or Natipinis 
may not be dangerous, but are greeted with great hostility. These two species compete for exactly the same resources in what concerns food and shelter. This young female ocelatus has every reason to be happy with her choice of a partner. Just to have an idea of how much digging means to these species, one just has to see the male's reaction to the female's digging activities while he is fighting a male of his own kind. These apparently barren wastelands of shells and silt are teeming with life and stories filled with every conceivable twists and turns. It may not be the most visually stunning habitat of Lake Tanganyika, but it is surely the one where lives are lived to their fullest. Those families up ahead also look happy. Together we'll get rid of all this dirt and one day we will build a large city. It will take its time and is filled with great danger and too many losses. That big family over there is just a faint glimpse of the future, Buana. No matter how many Mbokos and MOBAs try to mess with our plans, we will succeed. I know what you're thinking, Wana. You think that I'm delusional. But this is already real in some places. In those cities, we already work and live together like nothing you have ever seen, Wana. This is something no other people in the Great Lake can do. Well, that was strange. The relationship between males and females ocelatus is intense, yet somewhat distant. It involves a lot of admiring each other from a distance. The male's territory is several times bigger than the female's, even taking into account his and her size. He spends a great deal of time patrolling it. On the other hand, she has a much stronger bond to her shells than he does, and she never strays too far from them. This female only has one shell at the moment. She probably moved in recently since her work around the shell is just halfway through. This big splash of dust has no other purpose other than to attract him, and this technique never seems to fail. These nods to his belly seem to happen when she gets more impatient by his lack of enthusiasm.
her efforts to lure him to her shell will continue to bear no results, at least until her work isn't complete to his liking. All the same, he acknowledges her efforts, and he doesn't want to risk losing her to another male. He knows the exact location of other shells nearby and he starts to unbury one of them so that she doesn't have to search too far if she needs one more later. The female responds to his dust cloud with her own. He is not willing to be rushed though. As her work around the shell progresses, he starts to keep a closer eye on her. Both genders seem to be equally attracted to their partner's building activities, and the bigger the dust cloud, the more excited they get. He will unbury the shell to show her her potential new home, but the completion of the job will be up to her. They can either use their tails or their mouths, or both at the same time. Using their mouth as a bulldozer and their tail as a fan at the same time is an effective digging technique. For precision work, a mouthful of silt at a time is more adequate. Watching each other work is a great motivation for them to continue digging even more enthusiastically. She can't resist checking what he's doing, and it seems she approves of it. Shanotilapias move through large areas, sifting enormous amounts of silt and are blissfully unaware of the shell dwellers' territories. But at this stage of their courtship, the male ocelatus won't tolerate them around. But if the male is getting a bit more excited, the female is now far beyond that point and she's getting more impatient by the minute. Nothing more will happen until she finishes her job in turning that shell into a proper ocelatus home. Just a few hours of work is all it takes to complete her task. This nose-up position seems to be her signal to him that her work is ready for the final inspection. At last, it corresponds with a similar dance. does his final inspection. Everything is to his liking and they are both ready. A large school of Xenotilapias sweep the silt in the back, while the couple consummates their relationship. She has laid the first few eggs of her life inside the shell, and the male releases his milt at the entrance. The milt is pulled deeper inside the shell by her wriggling and by the water getting in when she gets out.
continue repeating this a few more times. It's now her job to fan her hex, keep her shell clean and defend it at close range while the male will continue patrolling this territory. Even a small live snail near their eggs is promptly removed. Their fry will be born in three days. And after a few more weeks with their mother, they will be gone and join the millions of others that still wander through the silty floors of Lake Tanganyika and survive against all conceivable odds. Uh, we're now in front of uh, Sulu National Park, and uh, in particular, I was in uh, the park, and I'm talking, uh, talking about uh, terrestrial and also the marine. Let's go to terrestrial first. Sure. Um, obviously, Sulu National Park represents one of the only, uh, three protected areas around Lake Tanganyika, um, and being one of the more diverse on the lake. Uh, terrestrial side is very diverse, dense thicket, small forest, and big wetlands that flow into the lake. It's an extremely diverse national park. Um, it's been protected for a long time, however, being so remote in Gambia and the pressures um, from population growth and that meant that the national park. Habitat is still intact, but um, a, lot of, a lot of the things like large mammals have been um, depleted a lot over the past few years. The habitat is mostly intact, but the structure of the habitat is also changing with the, with the lower numbers of especially large mammals. And what's happening uh, in the water? In the water, the, the waters are protected to 1.6 kilometers from the shoreline. 1 point? 1.6 kilometers. It's basically a nautical mile from, from shore. This uh, national park was extended to. Um, it's a well-designed national park. The Sumbu, Sumbu National Park in Corner is a very um, relatively shallow area and very, very uh, productive. Um, and it has it harbors a, a lot of fish um, compared to many other places in the lake. Um, what that has meant, though, especially in recent times, is that with um, fishing catches declining outside the national park, it's become more and more attractive for local fishermen to fish inside the national park, which is basically illegal. Um, no commercial fishing is allowed in the National Park and no use of nets is allowed in the National Park. Uh, so again, the diversity is still there, but a, a, a lot of fish um, have been taken out illegally and uh, it's, it's a big problem. It's, 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 as a reserve for fish life, which even the fishery outside the National Park will rely on, it's slowly getting um, So the long-term consequences of fish, fish loss in the National Park, um, well, we yet to know, but it will definitely have a, an adverse effect on it much further than the most international park. So, you were here uh, also in your childhood. So, how was this place 30 years ago? What are the first words that come to your mind when you think about this place 30 years ago? Um, a lot less fish and a lot less animals. Obviously, the physical features of the landscape. What you mean a lot? Describe me what you would see on land 30 years ago. Uh, all right, stuff that's very visible. For example, large herds of buffalo, um, numbering in the thousands, literally, um, in the late 70s, early 80s. Today, possibly the biggest group of buffalo is maybe 100, um, and possibly less. Uh, predators like lion um, were very numerous. It was very famous for, for large kinds of lions um, uh, associated with those buffalo. Today, very few lion left, um, and what that is, apart from it being uh, a worry on its own, it's an indication of an ecosystem that's not functioning as healthy as it should be. Um, and then going on to the water side of things, there's still a lot of fish you see. Angling is allowed in the National Park, you license the anglers, you go to pay a fee, and you license yourself to Zawa. Um, so there's still a lot of fish, but you see a lot less big fish. Um, and again, apart from that being a worry in itself, it's an indication uh, that the lake is under a lot of stress. 